take your marks. She started better than she has all week. Kate Campbell out in lane seven. McKeon made a good start as well as the two veterans at the head of the field. Shane is starting to pull through in lane four. Meg Harris a little bit off. Gee, I'll tell you, Kate's almost leading this. It's Kate Campbell, Emma McKeon, Shana Jack starting to pull through. Molly's not quite there in lane one. Shana's going to win it again. And Meg Harris has got second in the qualifying time. Emma McKeon in third. And Kate's dream has ended with the roar of a champion. She gave us a hell of a sight. Both missed out on something tonight. Oh, it's hard not to be moved. And what a show of respect from her, her colleagues that they have all immediately flocked to Kate Campbell's side. This is the most glittering of careers, a four-time Olympian. She still holds the Commonwealth and Australian record. You've taken us on quite the ride, Kate. And what we missed out in the opportunity of seeing Kate at another Olympic Games, we have gained so much in this country, in this sport from the 11 years that Kate Campbell has been doing this. She will leave a legacy in sprint swimming. So Shana and Meg are going to fly the flag in the 50 freestyle in Paris. Down to Gian. I tell you what, it's emotional on pool deck down here. Shana Jack, congratulations. You're going to your first Olympics with another individual swim. Yeah, I'm absolutely so proud with that swim. Thank you, guys. Um, finally cracked under the 24. Just, I just needed that extra 0.1, so I'm really proud of that swim and, um, you know, to do it with these phenomenal women and the likes of Kate, um, someone who I've looked up to for a very long time and who's actually mentored me along through my journey. So, you know, we can't thank Kate enough for everything that she's done. She's, you know, an ins inspiration to us all and she always will be. Beautifully said. I know that you have had a massive week. It's been huge. The pressure was off slightly after the hundred. How did you approach the fifty tonight? Is it still was it still unfinished business? <laughs> no, for me, it's definitely approaching every race with just you know trying to have fun. Um, I, you know, I missed out on a bit of time here and wasn't there for the 2021 Olympics. So I really wanted to come here and have some fun and see what I'm capable of. And I'm really proud of myself and everyone that represented themselves here at these championships. It's, it's gruelling, it's tough, and not everyone gets to make it. It's a really hard thing to see. Well, you're off to Paris, and it's going to be a beautiful event over there. Shana Jack, congratulations. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Meg, for you, congratulations. After a slight disappointment in the 100 the other night, you're not going to your second Olympics with an individual swim. Well done. Thank you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's... It's something that you can't really describe in the moment until you feel it. I mean, last night I was so happy with my race. Like, I mean, unfortunately it wasn't what I thought I had to train for, but I mean, I'm part of the relay again and I'm so excited to just be going for that. But to get this swim this morning, up this afternoon, I'm just so happy. What is it like lining up against some of the legends of our sport in your 50 free final at trials? I mean, being a part of these races are definitely going to be like some of the highlights of my career. I mean. I started my Olympic journey with Kate, Emma and Bronte in that 4 by one free and I mean I can only dream to like dream what these girls achieve and I mean I just hope to be a role model for young athletes like these girls have been for so many people. You already are Meg, congratulations, enjoy Paris. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, we couldn't let this opportunity go past without thanking you and congratulating you on what has been an exceptional career. You've had given us so many magical, historical moments over that time, and uh, we couldn't thank you enough, and we celebrate you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen.
four Olympics, eight Olympic medals, four of them gold. Dolphin number 286, an Olympian for half your life. Can you possibly sum up what this Australian swim team means to you? I've been on the Australian swim team for longer than I've been alive. I made my first team when I was 15 years old, swam up my first Olympics when I was 16. I'm now 32 and I just had one of my favourite moments in the pool. I started swimming at this pool in that diving pool just there. I have so many incredible memories here and I want to thank everyone here for being here to make this moment so special. It is It is bittersweet. It's not the fairy tale ending that I had hoped for, that I'd worked so hard for. Uh, the mind was willing, but the body was a little bit lacking. But that sport, that's why we love it so much. I don't want to take away from anyone who has been in the pool here. I have loved watching every single person. That moment with the girls in the water just before was, um, so incredibly special and um, I'm just so thankful for every single person who I've met along this incredible journey. Did that moment with the girls actually give you clarity on the legacy that you leave this sport? Yeah, I think that it's, it's very hard when you exist in an elite sport where you can often be measured by what you have achieved and the medals that you've won the medals that you've lost, and I've done both of those things. So to have that moment and to be remembered, hopefully for the person I am and the competitor that I have been is a legacy I would like to leave in the pool and something that that moment really cemented for me. And I go to your family, your incredible support group, and I want to pay tribute to Bronte. We asked Bronte about you last night, and she gave such a beautiful answer about the inspiration that you have been for her. How proud of Bronte are you that she's off to her fourth Olympics? Guys, there's still a Campbell and the Australian Dolphin swim team. Get behind it! Between the two of us, we can now say that the Campbells have been, or will go to eight Olympic Games. Absolutely incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, would you thank the magnificent Kate Campbell one last time. To personal best times for most, to book a trip to Paris. Take your marks. Will Petrick was the winner of the 200 individual medley, but missed the qualifying time by 0.31. Can he avenge that disappointment and confirm a place in the 400 individual medley for Paris? He and Brendan Smith, undoubtedly the two big guns lining up here in the final. Well, he's certainly gone out well. This early part, the first 50 metres of the butterfly leg. Brendan Smith's also up there. Both swimmers return home fast in the breaststroke freestyle legs. Surprising that uh, Brennan Smith has gone out as fast as, as he has. Jeez, they both look comfortable, however, as we reach the 75 metre mark of this butterfly leg. And William Petrick almost looks a little bit smoother in his stroke, but we know that Brendan is quite dynamic in most of his form strokes. And David slipped over in lane three, as he did this morning, swimming a good race. Trained at Arizona State University with Bob Bowman, the coach Michael Phelps, the undisputed king of the 400 individual medley at Olympic level. They transition now, and Brendan Smith leading in the backstroke leg. Will Petrick in second, slipped in third. Brendan Smith picks up in this backstroke leg. He's going for it here, trying to get the lead going into the breaststroke. Very similar to how this happened in the 200 metres individual medley. Expecting William to be able to bring something back. Breaststroke's a freestyle leg. As a backstroker, you can tell that he trains in an outdoor pool on the Gold Coast. 
always looking for that lane rope. He always sits close to that lane rope just to get an idea of where he is in the lane. Whereas William Petrick is much more measured of where he sits within the lane. We know that Brendan Smith is an incredible backstroker. He often makes his move in this leg, but also has a brilliant back to breast turn. And off that turn, is dynamic as well. So Petrick was pretty good in and out of that turn, and that, that gap had opened up to quite a handy lead for Smith, and he might have just pulled it back a fraction. And as Petrick's a better breaststroker out of the two, you see the stroke flowing. He's over the top of the water a lot more comfortably than what you'll see from Brendan Smith. He really needs to close this entire gap in the breaststroke leg. So keep an eye on that magic time. Four, 12.50, the qualification time. Brendan Smith, we know he's more than capable. He is an Olympic medalist, and that gap has shrunk again. So this turn, the advantage that you have on this, pull up, he wants to be up to a body length here. Pull him in, back to half a body length. He'll be in shot that stage. This is almost exactly what we saw in the heat this morning. Brendan with a commanding lead in the backstroke. William moving through, closing that gap, and they were nearly both hands on the wall at the end of this breaststroke leg this morning in heats, even at a lower stroke rate. However, Brendan just holding off Will Petrick at this stage. So Petrick had to glide into that 50. That's why I was in shock. It means that you don't get the bounce off the turn that you would usually going into the freestyle, like not the same trajectory underwater it will play out in the last 100. So a great battle emerging. It will continue for the remainder of the race. They've put a gap between first, second, and slipped back in third. The issue is the qualifying time. The line was slipping away from these two at the conclusion of the breaststroke leg. As they turn now with 50 metres to swim, it's a wonderful battle between Brendan Smith, the Olympic bronze medalist, and the up-and-comer, Will Petrick. Brendan Smith trying to find something. He has that huge six-beat kick when he dove, goes in the freestyle leg and watching Will trying to find something wow. and challenging him. They've caught the line. Smith's a body length ahead of it. And Petrick's trying to keep pace. It's going to be close with Will. Brendan Smith's got it bottled up. Petrick going to the wall. Can he seal an individual swim? He's got the time. He's got two in the 400 iron. I am so happy for that result. Oh. <laughs> well done to Brendan Smith, firstly, but also to Will Petrick. His response in missing out in the 200 and making that qualify was one of the most mature responses and what you wanted to hear from the swimmer. He was saying he has to put it behind him. He's disappointing. I have to look at the next opportunity. Next opportunity he has been able to deliver. This means he is going to the Olympic Games as well. And Ellie's down there with a couple of very happy swimmers. Will Patrick, Brendan Smith, you two must be thrilled with that swim because you've both just booked yourself a ticket to the Paris Olympic Games. Well done. Oh. oh, it's a dream come true, you know. I've been building all year. And to peak at the right time is just phenomenal, and I'm really happy with um, what I just did there. Uh, I'm sure you are. You had a brilliant swim. And if we look back to your 200 individual medley, we knew that qualifying time was tough, and you just missed that qualifying time, Will. How did it feel over the next few days leading into this race, knowing that you're going to have to put it all on the line to qualify on night six? That's Olympic trials, and <laughs> I love that pressure. And it's really, it's really good. There's no sport like it where you have to perform such on the day and it's so cutthroat because the Olympics every four years, so I'm really happy. Especially the 400 metre individual medley, that's for sure. Now I noticed as you exited the pool, you had your squad Nana Wadding up in the stands. I'm sure you'd love to send a message to those that you've swum beside for the last few years to get you to this dream of going to an Olympic Games. Oh, they're the best support crew, you know. Down in Victoria, we were, we were locked out for a while, so just having a good contingent of, uh, you know, training partners, but also I call them my friends and my other friends as well. Just, they're awesome. Yeah, they're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There's certainly nothing like a squad mate. Now, Brendan Smith, another Olympic Games. How was that race for you? Yeah, it hurt. I mean, you know, I've been building all week and 
it has been a very long emotional roller coaster, especially with teammates, you know. Some doing the best minute of their life and some obviously just missing out on the team. So I'm really happy to book my plane ticket to Paris and yeah, really excited for what's to come. How is it having to wait until night six for your main event? And as you mentioned, the emotional roller coasters of seeing your teammates, some qualifying for the team and some missing out, and having to wait till nine, night six for your moment. Yeah, look, I've had it both ways now because last Olympic trials, it was obviously night one. So I certainly appreciate having it on night one uh, as opposed to tonight. But yeah, again, I'm you know really happy that I've come away with a, with a ticket to Paris. and. To have my family here this time, it means the absolute world to me. I mean, you know, they've been, they've been with me every step of the way and, you know, they've sacrificed a lot. So I can't thank, you know, my family for being here, my friends all watching from home. And obviously, you know, Swimming Australia's biggest supporter, Mrs Ryan Hart, she's here tonight. And I, I'm really, really thankful for her support and, you know, my whole network of friends and family for being here for me. Absolutely. And I know they're all so proud of both of you. Congratulations, boys. Enjoy Paris. Thank you. Take your marks. Women's 400 individual medley in the pool. So a reminder that three of these women have been under that qualifying time before. That is Jenna Forrester, Ella Ramsey and Kia Melverton. It's so difficult when you're waiting till the final day and riding all the emotion with your squad mates and your coach and everyone else around you on the pool to have to hold that emotion in check until you get your chance to perform. So, as expected, Ella Ramsey out well. Jenna will be confident though, Gian, when she won bronze in Fukuoka, she's won 432.30. That's six seconds under. If she can swim so near her best, she'd be a good chance to, uh, to beat that time. And on PB is about four seconds quicker than her next competitor. So if she can produce that again, she wins and wins easily here, you would think. However, Ella Ramsey has had such an incredible breakout meet that when you're already swimming PBs, you almost expect to continue that trajectory. Well, all of the training is in place for both events or all events that you're swimming. And the expectation does rise. But that is great underwater work that we're seeing there by Forrester in lane four, of course. Kaylee McEwen is the Australian champion in the 400 IM. Ella was second to her. Jenna Forrester third at the Australian champs on the Gold Coast. Yep, when Kaylee swum this race, she swum her Australian record and said, no, that's enough for me. It's great in the 200 metres individual medley. Goes through as our fastest qualifier. So we also turn our attention to Kia Melverton in this final. As you briefly mentioned, Thorpe, we knew Kia as a 1500 swimmer, an 800 1500 swimmer. She was a distance freestyler. And really, since moving to Michael Bowl and coming a part of that incredible squad that includes Kaylee McEwen, she's taken on the IM events. And so this 400 IM, she's pulled out of the 15 obviously today as well to concentrate on this 400 IM looking for that spot. Michael Bowl, of course, coach Stephanie Rice. He also was a decent medley swimmer himself. It's a right program. So Ella Ramsey was a very quick turn for her and she's bridged a little bit of that margin in. Forrester from Ramsey and then Kayla Hardy out in lane three in third position at the moment, but this is a wonderful battle once again, as it was in the men's event. And Ella has taken the lead from Jenna Forrester. We've really been able to see in both the men's and now we're seeing in the women's how critical this breaststroke leg is. And, you know, what needs to happen if you want to be up there for Jenna Forrester is she just needs to be within reaching distance uh, to be able to challenge. You can't allow Ella Ramsey to get away in this next 50 metres. For Ella, second in the 100 breaststroke. So this is undoubtedly the strength of her individual medley swim. But Jenna just trying to stay probably within a body length on the transition into freestyle, but she's really powering away here. She's been one of the finds of the week, Ella Ramsey. The 19-year-old, the daughter of Heath Ramsey, 
who represented Australia at the Sydney Games of 2000. And she touches the wall here by a body length margin on Jenna Forrester. 100 metres of freestyle to swim, and the plane is waiting. Body length for two seconds. It's a lot to catch up. Stems off the wall to being a body and a half. Do you have to catch up? Let's turn our attention to the time, 4.38.53. You would think that Ella Ramsey has got this race swum and done, but wouldn't it be amazing to think that we've got two athletes in this women's 400 IM going to their first Olympics? So Ella is really ripping through the water here. Forrest is trying to find an effort. But it's Ella Ramsey who has been sublime throughout this week. This last 50 minutes have been 32 seconds. So yeah, Ramsey it's... has the line. It's up to Jenna Forrester to see whether we can get two in the women's 400 IM. I think we're going to. Ella Ramsey, you're a star. Ella's off to Paris. She's got four swims. And Jenna Forrest is going to join her in the 400. We've saved the best night until last. Smiles everywhere, and there's a couple of glowing ones from our competitors. Ella Ramsey and Jenna Forrester, congratulations. See the emotion from the parents. Jenna had to ask Ella to make sure she was seeing the clock right. Is that right? Yes. Did I make qualifying? Did I do it? Well done, ladies. Dean Boxall in the crowd, thrilled for Jenna Forrester. Another member on the Australian Olympic team for him. They were awesome. Ella Ramsey, bring on Paris. And Jenna Forrester is going to join in the 400 IM, and they are down with Ellie. Jenna, Ella, congratulations. You both just swam qualifying times to Paris. Now, Jenna, it took you a moment to realise that you've just made your first Olympic team. Yeah, I mean, I saw the time and I thought it said 38, but I thought I'd double check because I normally wear glasses, so I wasn't entirely <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think we might need to find you maybe a contact lens sponsor down the road. But how are you feeling heading off to an Olympic Games? It's Paris, a place to be, that's for sure, at the end of the year. Oh, I am just so excited. I can't even believe this is real. Um, I just missed out on the last Olympics, so to get my hand on the wall under that qualifying, it really just means everything to me. And I'm sure you have lots of supporters and people who have encouraged you along the way to get to this moment. How do you feel knowing that you have so many wonderful people who are supporting you in this moment? And would you like to send a message out to your family? Oh man, I feel like this year has been so tough and I know that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of my team back home and my family. They've stood alongside me this whole journey, so thank you guys so much. I love you, Mum and Dad. Um, you too, Amy, my sister. And yeah, just thank you so much, everyone. Oh, you're a breath of fresh air. I wish I was on the team with you. And Ella, you've just booked your third individual event for Paris. I'm sure that you realise that you've been the find of this competition. You must be thrilled with that performance. Oh, to be honest, I kind of wanted a bit more, but <laughs> the last day and to put together a swim like that and a small PB, I can't, can't be mad with that. Now, I asked you before which event you find the more, more painful, the 200 metre individual medley or the 400 individual medley, and you said the 200. <laughs> Yeah. But you must have been pretty happy with that performance overall because you have just booked yourself another individual swim. It's going to be a huge program. How do you think you're going to manage Paris? Uh, I don't even know when like the events are, but I think they're pretty spread out. Just I'm going there to soak up everything from the team, so I just can't wait to be on the team, to be honest. No, we're, but we're looking forward to seeing both of you race. Congratulations on booking yourself a ticket to Paris. Congratulations, Jenna Forrester and Ella Ramsey. Yeah. Great start by Simpson out in lane two. Temple is up there close enough to the pace. Wasn't the best of starts. Jesse Coleman in lane three swimming strongly also. And Armbruster from lane five. But I reckon that Cody Simpson's through. up at somewhere near the head of the field here, Thorpe. There's very little separating them. And we've got one lap to go. Temple, Coleman, Armbruster to the first three. 
Point zero five from the lead. Oh, he's a monster, Matt Temple. Have a look at him ripping through the water here. Temple swimming magnificently. Armbruster on his right-hand side and Jesse Coleman on his left. Temple might be getting a little tired. Simpson's trying to come into it late. Temple's leading the way to the wall. Matt Temple, does he get there in qualifying time? He does. He's the only one. Temple's going to Paris. He's a critical part of the Australian team. And our best butterfly swimmer has qualified. Cody Simpson, he gave it everything there. He looked good for the first lap. And then he surged late but couldn't quite get to the wall in time. He's finished in fifth. But he should be congratulated on the bravery that he has displayed to pursue this journey. Matt Tepchi was close to the qualifying time. <laughs> it was getting away on him. He just had it up on the wall. Well, let's go down to Ellie. Matt Temple, we were all very much looking forward to this race. How are you feeling as you're walking out behind the blocks, ready to qualify for a Paris Olympic Games? Um, lots of words, but I think um, being my second Olympic trial, second time round, um, it's a bit easier knowing what to expect. And um, I didn't expect that from the rest of the boys, so <laughs> that's exciting. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with that. Now, in, in Tokyo, you came fifth. Yeah. You have six weeks left to bank for the preparation heading into Paris. What are you going to be working on over the next six weeks to ensure that you're in the best form you are for Tokyo? For, for Paris, I should say. <laughs> um, I would have liked to go a bit quicker than that here, but it is what it is. So 16 week, oh, six weeks to knuckle down again and have a crack, and I'm just saving the rest of Paris. Now, just quickly, I just want to address something that I saw online earlier today. It's about quite an innovative training approach that you have about a rubber chicken attached to a pulley, and you've been chasing this rubber chicken up and down the pool over the last few weeks. Yeah, so we've come <laughs> up with a good idea. Well, Sean, um, that's how he's come up with a good idea, rubber chicken. I have a few chickens at home at Kyle's farm, and um, that takes up most of my spare time. So Sean's <laughs> put a dog toy on a drill, and I've got to chase it underwater and try and keep up with it. So when people make training fun, it makes it a bit more enjoyable for me because I say the last three months have been pretty hard. Yeah, absolutely. Well, enjoy Paris and enjoy chasing that rubber chicken up and down the pool for the next six months. Congratulations, Matt Temple. You're off to another Olympics. Yeah, thank you. So Lani Pallister in the water having won her first Australian title in this event back in 2022. And her mum, Janelle Elford, was an Australian champion in the 1500 on three separate occasions. The Australian record is owned by Matty Goff, 1546-13. Lani is already on the team, so she gets a free swing. I wonder if she decides to try and go fast here and have a crack at the national record. Hasn't it been an incredible week for Lani Pallister? Every race that she's been in, she's qualified for the team in one way or the other. Second to Arnie in both the 400 and the 800. Part of the 4x2 relay in the 200 freestyle final the other night. So from incredible disappointment in missing that Tokyo team, incredible disappointment. We wondered if she'd come back from it and then had a horror run with so many different things. To see her back and to see her qualifying in every event that she's swimming and swimming so well is, is just a joy. It is a joy that she is swimming well and that she is doing well. It's applying the same principles from a 50 all the way through to a 1500. We've seen Cam McAvoy in the 50 do a lot less training, but only training at that top end speed. So his body, his stroke rate, everything only knows how to be perfect at that pure race speed. And you just heard Michael Bowl say that's very similar for Lani, albeit over a 1500 and at that pace, but knowing that that's where she needs to be every lap of the 1500 if she wants a great time. The gap's closed a little bit here. Lani Palace is still with a relatively comfortable lead, but Moesha Johnson has eaten into this margin and given her pedigree in open water swimming, she will be very strong at the end of this race. She has lifted her stroke rate, Moesha Johnson. We said that... What's happened in this race is that Lani has gone out very hard, as we know that she does. Moesha hasn't had that speed to go with her, but once we kind of hit the 500 metre mark, then all of a sudden Moesha and Lani are swimming at the same pace. The gap was not closing. It was not 
becoming any larger. So now we've got a situation where Moesha has found another gear. That distance training has kicked in to a certain degree. And she is closing this gap. Lani, of course, has had a huge week. Lots of mileage swum and raced this week. So will it be enough? With two laps to swim for a PB and both of them under the qualifying time. The sweet sound of the bell with 100 to swim in the 15. And Lani, she's doing it nicely. She's looking to increase the rate. Moesha Johnson swimming a fantastic race in second position. And they've got quite a margin on the rest of the field as one would expect. Oh, you can see Lani sitting a little bit lower in the water. This is hurting now. She's it, in the hurt locker now. Yeah. Shoulders are red. She's sitting low in the water, just trying to find something else. We watch that kick bring in now. She brings the kick in now. She knows she hasn't got far to go. She knows she's going to win this race, but she wants a time. Gee, Moesha's absolutely flying through the last 50. This is going to get pretty tight. Lani's going to win it, but Moesha Johnson, she's back to about a couple of body lengths away. What a swim from the open water competitor. But Lani Pallister, it's been another red letter week. 15, 53, 79, Moesha Johnson touches the wall in second. Both swimmers under the qualifying time. 15.57. Four seconds underneath the qualifying time. Well done. So our two girls that are qualified in the 1500s, yeah, it's been an unbelievable night of qualification. That qualification line's been blown out of the water. Lani Pallister and Moesha Johnson, congratulations to them both. And Ellie is down pool deck. Congratulations, Lani. Congratulations, Moesha. You've just, just both qualified for a 1500. Now, Lani, you have been very consistent this week. You've swam your third individual event. 400, 800, and now the 1500 for Paris. You're going to have a very big program. <laughs> yeah, it will be big. Um, I don't really think that reflects my training. Um, I'm pretty keen to get back in after this week and put together a four-week block going into Paris. Um, I think I have a lot more in the tank than that, so I'll take another qualifying time, another event, and I can't wait to represent Australia in five weeks' time. You absolutely cannot be disappointed in that. Now, in a 1500, I've never done one, but what's going through your mind in that last 200 metres? Um, that was pretty, <laughs> pretty ugly, but... Um, <laughs> More just trying to make sure you're holding on to the pace. I think I, I feel like I dropped off a fair bit on the back half. Um, but yeah, I think you get into a rhythm, like the amount of times that you end up swimming it. Um, you just get used to how you swim the race. But I, do, I feel like when you finish and touch the wall, you don't actually remember anything that happened except how much it hurt. <laughs> it's probably a defensive strategy there. Moesha, congratulations. Now, you're already off to Paris for the 10K, yeah. but you are now the only second woman in Australian history who will be representing Australia both in the open water as well as the pool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't realise that. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, I'm just, like, it's a huge relief. Even though I'd already qualified, you know, there's still that little bit of pressure coming in, just, like, putting down a time that you're happy with and... Yeah, I just, I'm super stoked just to have done it under 16 minutes again. And yeah, just got the job done. It is very impressive to be able to swim that distance in under 16 minutes. When you touched the wall and looked back at the time and saw that you had swum under the qualifying time, can you describe the kind of emotions that you were feeling? Yeah, you know, you train and you, you put down times in training and you think, you know, X plus Y equals Z, but sometimes it just doesn't quite pull together like that. So. Um, even though you know that you can swim those times, just to turn around and actually see it on the boards always just, oh, it's just a huge relief. It's just something that you're so happy and excited about and just knowing the people who have been behind me the last few years, like, it just means so much. Absolutely. And if we speak about people that have been behind you, I was speaking to your godmother, Dawn Fraser, before you dived into the pool for that 1500 and she said to send you a message to say that she's incredibly proud of the swimmer and the woman that you've become. She can't wait to see you race in Paris. But Lani, do you have a message for our lovely Dawn Fraser? Always. I am very grateful for Dawny. Um, I think our relationship is one that's very special and one that you wouldn't be able to replicate. She was at my christening pretty much, so I've known her the full 22 years I've been alive. But the legacy that she left for Australian swimming and the woman that she is and the woman that she is to turn up on deck um, after she retired and be so involved in swimming Australia is just incredible. And I don't think you'd find anyone like her in the world. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure she echoes that sentiment. Congratulations, Moesha. Congratulations, Lani, on your third individual qualifying time. Ladies and gentlemen, Lani Pallister and Moesha.
Congratulations, Johnson.